Today's session is about composition. We're specifically gonna be focusing on how to compose well inside of the canvas, how to create something that is aesthetically appealing, but also how we can better integrate the different concepts we're trying to bring into a piece that we're working on. Really for folks who are used to traditional methods of composition and kind of doing it all yourself, how do we get the results that we're looking for using AI? And that's really what we'll dive into today, using those tools to integrate the piece that we're working on together. Let's make this, you know, something that I cannot have prepared for. We always love that because it puts me in fun positions. We will do a forest mystical setting a rough painterly style uh, trees near a riverbank old worn bridges we're gonna go with this one so i am going to get rid of this bridge because we don't like that it's duplicative in the background we're gonna just gonna kind of take it out i'm gonna take some of these colors and, and kind of highlight that when you're looking at a composition colors matter. There's an interesting way to get colors that you might want to play with out of this. So I'll just duplicate this real quick so you can see that. If you want to just create a quick color palette while you're working on this, you can take out a copy of the raster layer and filter that and then use the color map filter. Then you can increase the tile size if you want a smaller palette. But what it's going to do is it's going to give you a bunch of like colors that are in that image. And I found that it can be an interesting exploration of like what colors you want to highlight and what is really like standing out in an image already, right? So if you take something over, it's going to kind of give you almost like a mathematical representation of the colors that are in that scene. It also gives you like a cool little palette that you can work from. You know, obviously there's like multiple ways to get colors, but this is just a fun one to kind of create some consistency there. So I'll take some of these blues and kind of put those over here and just continue pulling some of these colors out as we get rid of this bridge in the background. And that gives us like our nice little scenery. Okay, so we've got a better composition here. We've got a bridge. We've iterated on that. Someone said, now we add a panda. I, I will add a panda. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to take my bounding box over here and we're going to generate something that's completely separate from this. Okay. So we're going to say a panda standing monk attire, white background, simple, zen, peaceful. So we've got like our little like monk panda here. I am going to accept that. I'm going to select object and pull the panda out. I think for the most part, we're good. I'm just going to take it. We are going to pull this fella into our scene. And then I'm turn isolated preview off. So the reason I flipped them over, and one thing you'll notice, we've got our scene here. And if we were to integrate this, one thing that would be off is the lighting, right? And so this is something that, that you have to contend with. We've got lighting here coming from the right side of this panda. But in this scene, the lighting is largely, the highlights are on the left, right? They're coming from that direction. And so if I were to bring this in and naively just kind of like try to, to leave it as is, there's inconsistency there. I'm recognizing that the easy solution for this is doing what I did, which is like, you know, flip it so that all the lighting's on the left. What may be more interesting for folks is how might we get that to generate with the right lighting? We're going to pull him down and we're going to put him on this bridge. Ah, uh, we'll put him coming off the bridge. We can do it on the bridge, but he's going to be further away. And I kind of want him to be like passed up. There's our little monk guy. Obviously, if we called it here, even if I did it in painting, this would look a little off. It would look a little bit weird, right? He's not blended in. He's not stylistically integrated into the scene. There's like, there's stuff missing here. If I want to fix the lighting and I want to fix the aesthetics, I am going to merge it all. So I merged the scene. I've got a layer now that has everything in it. It also has this color palette in it, which I'm just going to crop. So I'm going to crop the layer to the bounding box. So this is just a merged layer of this. And then I'm going to convert that to a control layer. And I am going to do, let's do this. Let's do line art again. Yeah, I think that'll give us just a little bit more 
little bit more accuracy on this this uh, panda here. We're going to have to have the bounding box a little bit focused in, but not too focused in. We want it to still be in the scene because we need it to pick up the lighting that it needs to adhere to. We're going to have in paint mask. I'm going to create it from the raster layer. So I'm going to right click the raster layer and copy that to a new in paint mask. That'll just give me an exact in paint mask around that character that we brought in. And I'm going to have to keep the denoising strength pretty high if I want it to correct the setting here. Walking in a forest near a bridge, a monk attire, Take out white background, simples and peaceful, rough, painterly style. And we're going to see what we get here with that up at point eight. Point eight is going to be high enough that it might ignore some of the colors, but it will actually fix some of that lighting for us as well. So we look back there, we can see that it looks like it got photoshopped in. It's a little bit rough. That is a little bit, little bit better. We're gonna probably wanna go in and do some detailing, but it looks more integrated into the scene. Some things that it's added, it's added some like highlights here on the bottom that I don't know that I like. So let's just see if we generate another one, if it picks up more of like the colors of the scene. Yeah, that one's a little bit better. What's interesting is it keeps a lot of the orange elements, mostly probably coming from the prompt. But the colors and the tones of this are a li little bit more blended in with these like these hues from this this scene. So in our previous scene, it was kind of like white and black and very stark colors. This has kind of blended those down such that it feels like it's like very integrated. So this looks better, and the lighting is also fixed, right? So the lighting is not all on the right hand side. It's kind of a little bit more on the left and from the back, which is what you would expect in this scene. So it looks. A little bit more natural right now i want to get some of those facial details in so we're going to kind of bring this back down and now that the lighting is fixed we can come in and focus on the details so i'm going to pull down the denoising strength because i don't want it to reimagine those colors as much i'm also going to take away this in paint mask and work on a new one and we're going to focus just on like some of the details in this because the denoising strength is a little bit lower, it won't do as much changing, but it will add in a lot of the details because we're focused on a smaller bounding box, right? So we've got our panda. See, he's got a little smile on his face, and that has been integrated into the scene. The last piece, the last piece that we'll focus on today is just the framing of this, right? And the framing that we're going to look at here is how do we capture all of these elements in such a way that the overall frame focuses our attention on this month and that's going to come down to like framing so we can frame it like this and try to get him on that one third line so there's a concept of the rule of thirds and that's kind of going to sit basically in between the first and second third that line is where this this monk would sit the other thing we could do which would probably be similarly interesting is focus on creating kind of a taller scene you know, he's sitting on this kind of lower, the line between the lower thirds and gives us a little bit of a perspective there. So I'm going to crop the canvas to this bounding box. So now we've got this kind of like scene where we've got this monk walking through this forest. There's a bridge. We save that out. And then obviously we would go upscale that, right? So we've got this scene, we've got the composition, we've integrated that element. That's nice. It's kind of like a nice little portrait, a little little vignette of this world that this character lives in. I think that's everything. Glimmer reminded me, like, subscribe, do all the stuff on YouTube. We will call that an end for today. Take care, everybody.